Call this meeting to order at 6 o'clock, according to Dylan's watch. Yes, ask him. Uh, okay, approval of the minutes. Have you all read the minutes? Yes. Seconded. You move. Okay, we have a motion on the floor to approve the minutes as written and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. New old business. I think we have interested citizens first. Oh, number we're three oh, number three. If I moved my hand, I could see it. So, <clears throat> Daryl Richardson, please. Want to come up and talk to us? Uh, Daryl Richardson, I live at uh, 3985 Rivercrest Drive in Kaiser. I've been here a long time. Uh, I'm just wondering how many of you are aware of the shooting that's going on across the river at the shooting range, or the, there's supposed to be a shooting range. Um, we got four parks along the river, and there have been bullets flying over Sunset Park, and a while back, and I was just wondering if anybody here was aware of what was going on. You are. I believe that everybody is. Okay, well, that's what I. Well, I don't know if they're aware of that, but um, Tom Bowers' <coughs> uh, house was hit by a bullet, and his wife was barely missed by uh, a bullet. Anyway, the um, Polk County. Commissioners had a meeting today, and it was uh, about, I don't know, 30 people from our Kaiser area that attended the meeting, and maybe there will be something done about the shooting on the other side of the river. And, um, but I would just want to know if anybody was aware, and it sounds like everybody's aware, and, and it'd be kind of nice to hear your opinions about what's going on Maybe not tonight, but just along the way. Um, and if, yeah, I, I was just asking about it. Oh, I didn't uh, see your hand up. Darryl, uh, first of all, thank you for being here. I'm trying to, uh, first of all, thank you for being here. And as, as a council member, uh, we've been talking about coming up with something because I've, you know, the very first time that we heard of it, we took it very, very seriously, and I want the Salem, the West Salem Neighborhood Association to know this, because we have to speak with, we can't like all go over there, so there was just a perception that we didn't do as much, but I will tell you one thing, there's a resolution coming up. I mean, if, if I had my way, there would be no shooting, you know, <laughs> period, yeah. but there's a process, and we want to speak with one voice, and Shannon Johnson was our voice, and I'm sure he was there today. Yeah, he was there. Yeah, and just so you know, a lot of us can't, uh, we want to speak with one voice as a council, and we are very, I mean, determined to something, I mean, it's got to stop. I mean, it's the, from the very time, first time we heard it, we all spoke about it, and it's very, very serious, and we take it very serious, and something's going to, it's going to stop completely. Well, that's what's going to. But the, the, yeah. the, what I wanted you to know, and anybody else, is that the council is very united, but at the same time, we got to be careful how we do it, and Shannon Johnson is our voice, so we can't all go. Uh, you know, I wanted to call him the next day. And, and well, we you can because today there was 30 citizens yeah, no, 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 from was, Kaiser area right. that went we over. We wrote a letter as a, as a group. As a, yeah, you know. and they testified. There was about, I don't know, eight or ten. I wasn't there because I had other things going on. But um, there will be, they will stop shooting eventually. Oh, yes. And there was four incidents that happened, four um uh, bullets that came over on our side of the river I'm that we of. know of yeah. okay one two of them hit a house so anyway and yeah. but i would just thank you and your uh, the neighborhood associate for your involvement and that's your voice has been very loud and clear okay and rhonda i know she, she gets frustrated but i'll tell you what we couldn't have louder voices than you folks and we appreciate that exactly thank yeah. you yes um i live 
directly across from what they're talking about. I mean directly across. And they're shooting automatic guns. Sometimes it sounds like they're machine guns, semi-automatics. I haven't had one hit my house, but I was out on the porch here back about three, four weeks ago, and I have some neighbors that have some real tall trees. Bullet went through there. And uh, so I can relate to um, what Daryl was saying. Um, but they are right across from me, so I probably don't get it because there's a wall right there, but if they're shooting the two other directions down the river, they can get it at sunset easy, and they can get it down at uh, Tom Bowers where a bullet went right through the house. Anyone else? Thank you. Well, thank you for listening. Thanks for bringing the information forward. New old business. Oh, well, no, they're for the, the grads. All three of them? Yeah. No, we got two. Peggy and Jerry Moore, please. again. <laughs> I'm Peggy Moore and I live in West Kaiser. I'm Jerry Moore and I live with her. <laughs> so we're here tonight to ask for a matching grant for $1,270. We'd like to put uh, solar equipment on our greenhouse at Rickland Community Garden. We had the um, greenhouse donated last fall. We have no electricity at the garden, and we want to progress and move forward and make our garden even better than it already is. We're the only place on uh, Chalmers Stones Park that has flowers. Did you know that? <laughs> <laughs> There's trees and shrubs and grasses, but we have flowers that make it pretty, and we have lots and lots of vegetables. We have 17 beds that we ran out, so there are 17 families that feed out of that garden but they share with neighbors, friends. They donate when they have extra, they donate to usually some Monka place, sometimes to the food bank. So we feed a lot of people and we just like to improve our garden. The uh, solar panels, it's gonna take 600 watts, six panels, and we're gonna mount them on the, the little tool shed that's beside the greenhouse mount them on the roof of that so it'll be facing the sun and uh, <clears throat> then run the wires down and we got, of course we got to take it into batteries and everything and run it over to the greenhouse and all the greenhouse is wired all we got to do is just hook the wires to it so uh, and I went to uh, Home Depot and uh, had them work up an estimate on the material cost and it come within a hundred dollars of the bid we got to do it. And uh, the, the guy that it, we got a bid from is an electrician, but he has never installed the, uh, the uh, solar. solar panels. But from what I understand and what he understands, everything just kind of plugs together. The hardest part's just putting them on the roof and getting them mounted up there. But. Uh, so we're really interested in getting something going. We're gonna have to get out and gather up some more money, but if we can get a, this donation go started, we'll have something to start with to keep it going on. We do have one small grant that is already being given to us, and then we have a small amount of cash to add to that, but we're still way short. We still need help. See, the garden income is only $200 a year. Wow. And we furnish all the seed, all the fertilizer, all the compost, all the plants, everything, all the tools. All they got to do is just come and plant their stuff and water it and take care of it. And uh, we ha actually have a couple of families that are, uh, I, I don't want to say low income, but not privileged, I guess. And uh, we just donate plots to them to... Uh, 
give them, help them out and their families. And it's a lot of hard work, but we enjoy it. <laughs> so, so Mr. Chair, so I, I, I reached out uh, now three times to the Energy Trust of Oregon, and I was able to talk to somebody today. Um, I sent them a copy of your grant application. They're going to look at it. We're still trying to get this done for you um, in terms of uh, trying to work with them. Again, with, with these kind of smaller projects, these are things that they really enjoy doing. Um, I didn't get any commitment other than they're going to look at it and hopefully should have an answer back for me by the end of the week. Um, with that being said, I think there's some opportunity here uh, to, um, you know, how, how much cash are you guys short right now on this thing outside of the grant? Um, outside of this grant, if right. you get it? We have about... Just a little under five hundred dollars. That you need to still raise. Five hundred. Okay. So we're we still have to go out and try to get we're another. Sti we're still short about another thousand dollars. About a thousand total. Yeah. Okay. I have um, applications in for a couple grants, but you never know if you're going to get them or get the amount that you asked for. Right. Right. Um, well, again, I'm I'm still working on the energy trust thing. Um, like I said, hopefully I'll have an answer by the end of the week on exactly what they can or cannot do. Um, and, you know, the goal ultimately would be that they actually provide this all because it is a really good project. It does go into the community and help folks out as well as teaching people about, you know, growing um, food and whatnot. So um, I think it's a great project. I mean, both of you have done a tremendous amount of work, uh, you know, making that garden sustainable. You got the fence in a couple years and years ago and did a really good job with that. I know we helped bring the greenhouse down. Um, and so personally, I really like this. Um, whether or not we can get the, um, the uh, energy trust piece in place or not, um, I'd like to talk to you guys and see what I can do to maybe help try to raise that extra thousand bucks. Sounds good. This is our third season in the garden for us being the coordinators. We've did a tremendous amount of work on it. It's you can ask Robert. It's it has really did an about face. <clears throat> you, I drive by it every day. Yes, Robert. I would like to speak to that. Um, Peg and Jerry have been the most amazing garden overseers that you could ever ask for. I've literally watched that garden start from a turf area when I first started here, and it was nothing, and it's become a beautiful garden that anybody would love to have in their backyard, which really isn't possible because they're over there constantly working on it. Um, <clears throat> I've literally watched them take nothing and turn it into something. It's amazing what you guys use for resources, and um, I, I can't speak highly enough about these two right here. Okay. So for whatever that's worth to you. Thank you, Robert. Thank yeah. you. Okay, this is one question. Okay. To the... Uh, the Rickman Community Garden is part of Chamber Jones Park. Is that correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. I haven't actually been there, but uh, I should go <laughs> and check it out. <laughs> you drive down Rickman Road and you drive right. Okay. A couple hundred yards away. And I think it's great what you're doing with the solar panels, and I, so I'm all in favor for it. <laughs> Thank you. So, Mr. Chair, I'd like to put a motion on the table. All right. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to approve the. Uh, matching grant presented by uh, Peggy and Jerry Moore as presented. Do we have a motion? And do we have a second? I'll second it. A motion and a second to accept the um, the grant. Matching grant. The matching grant as written. Any discussion? Yeah, I have a couple of questions. Okay. Um, you, did you say a minute ago four 100 watt panels or? Did I, or sorry, you said six. As, at least that's what I heard. It's six it, 100 block panels. Okay. It says four on here. Is that... Uh, I know that, uh, that yeah. bid, bid just say... I, I think he thought there was 200 watt panels, but okay. it actually takes four. And, uh, or I mean, it actually takes six. And when okay. I went down to Home Depot, they did... They did have 200 watt panels, so I, I think what he planned was to put in two 200 watt panels and the two 100 watt panels. Oh, okay. So that because yeah, there's another panels. spot on here where it says two 300 watt ones, but in the end you're looking for yeah. 600 watts total. Um, yeah, that makes uh, 
2,400 watt hours per month. Okay. And, and that was my next question was it said 2,000 here, which I maybe just didn't know how they worked, but awesome. You just answered it. That's all I had. I just wanted to make sure it was all yeah. right. Any other questions? <coughs> Hearing none. So, all those in favor of granting the matching grants, say aye. 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 All those opposed? Very good. Thank you, folks, very, very much. <laughs> and we'll Thank follow up on, I'll follow up with you guys by the end of the week on the energy trust piece. Okay. Or, or fundraising. We'll figure it out. We'll get it done. All right. If you don't get back to us, we'll come looking for you. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's hear from Hidden Creek. If it's hidden, how do you find it? I'm just kidding. Well, <laughs> we have people. I mean, somebody had to go there, right? I no. Mean, <laughs> <laughs> My name is Don Amon, and I'm representing Hidden Creek homeowners association and we're here requesting a matching fund grant of eight hundred ninety two dollars uh, for the installation of the irrigation system on hidden creek park um, the park we've been i think it's fair to say we've been cooperating with the parks department over several projects between tree installation and a lot of other things to enhance the park area um, we, it acts as a great um, place for people to walk through, um, walk their dogs. It's a great recreational place. But the there is no irrigation in the in the park currently. Um, summertime is always, especially in the hot summers, it's the grass pretty much gets distressed. We planted a lot of new trees that, that have, we've had to provide water bags for. We've actually provided the water bags for. The trees get distressed as well, and so their, their well-being is also challenged in these hot, dry summers. And so with the park's ability now to keep up on the mowing, we felt it was a good time to come and, re and request this irrigation system. We've been talking about it for a long time. Um, the people like the area, they like to keep it up, uh, even though it's a park area and it's not the responsibility of us. Um, and so we feel it's the right time to come and ask uh, to cooperate with us in putting in together this irrigation system. The, the grant is half of the the cost of the materials and the trencher. Uh, we're putting it, the, all the labor will be provided by the homeowners association. Um, and so that's what we're hoping to accomplish tonight. Do I have any input on this, Robert? Um, just like you said, I've been working with the Hidden Creek Neighborhood Association now for probably five years over various projects. Um, they've done some uh, weed removal, um, hazardous debris removal, they've planted trees, they've continued to help keep the park clean. Uh, we've discussed irrigation. Uh, one of the biggest concerns, I think, uh, in the summer months, especially during fire danger season, is you know, when you have a large area of dry turf, or a, a, <clears throat> I'm not gonna call it extremely developed turf because it's kind of field grass that just became turf, but uh, when it dries out, you know, some kid drives, walks by, throws a cigarette out, and go whoosh. Now you've got this large natural area backed up to houses that you could potentially have a large uh, fire danger. So anytime we can reduce that, I'm all for it. Um, now we have staff on board that's keeping up with the mowing. That was the other part of it is every time we add irrigation, we add mowing. That's not as much of an issue right now. We're keeping up with all our mowing just fine. So I do agree this was a great time for them to come forward and have this discussion. So I'm all for it. Thank you, Robert. Yes, Donna. Um, was putting irrigation in that park or any park um, part of the planned acquisition going forward improvements that you guys wrote? There? Are you referring to the master plan? I guess. Or what? I'm not sure. Oh, our priority plan? Um, not specifically mentioned, if you will, um, but again, that priority plan, uh, the way I view it, is more what staff is taking on, and these guys are volunteering to do 100% of the project. But there still be maintenance required? And I mean, we already mow it, so 
we're going to be mowing it a little more frequently in the summer months, where as right now, we can probably get away with mowing it every other week. So um, we'd still be in there mowing it every week. But you're talking, this is a, a very narrow piece that's going to be irrigated, um, and it's already connected to Country Glen, so we're not mobilizing twice. We would literally drive the lawnmower from Country Glen over without reloading it on a, on a truck. So. And who's maintaining the system? The sprinkler system would be maintained by city staff, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And who's paying for the water? <laughs> just thought I'd Yeah, ask. parks. Okay. Just want to make sure that we've looked at everything. Sure. I mean, it's a great idea, and I, I approve the concept and the idea, but I want to make sure that we're going to – this all works into um, what we had in mind going forward this year and in future years. Sure. How many parks do we have that have irrigation? Uh, I don't have that number in front of me right this second, but uh, just a, uh, yeah, guess. Um, three quarters of them. So we have 18, 19 parks. So three quarters of those probably have irrigation. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes, Matt. So along those lines, Don, I, I like your thought process on that a little bit. And um, I kind of when first of all, if we have to go forward with the grant, I love it. I think it's a great idea. I, I, I'd support it 100. percent But where my brain's going with this is a little bit, you know, we've got a homeowners association ready to do this um, and ready to get the project put in place. And what first came to my mind when I saw this was similar to leveling out the field before the eclipse event, right? Where what was holding us up was $1,500 for the, uh, the uh, 1200C mm -hmm. permit, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we lost a huge amount of value and all that work. And where I could see this is um, if the HOA is gonna do all this, Maybe there's an opportunity, rather than going through the grant program, just to fund it through the increased maintenance and service piece. So essentially the city pays for it um, through that rather than the grant fund and just gets all the assets and then let the, uh, let the so, 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 I, I hate to say sublet the contract sort of through the HOA, but kind of sort of, if that makes sense. So the biggest problem I would have with that is our budget's already been approved and it's basically all the money's already allocated and to throw something like a project into that budget would be unfair on other items. So basically, I would tell you at that point, I would rather wait till next year to do that and we could budget for it. And I don't think that's what anybody in this current situation okay. wants. So I think that's a really good response. So because everything's budgeted out right now, I think I'm going to tangent here for a second. If we see these projects coming up, especially as we look forward to the new prioritization for the next fiscal year, these kind of projects would be really good things to sort of bring forward to the Parks Board in terms of possible additional priorities, right? Possible additional yeah. projects. Yeah. So if somebody has a pet project, let's say they want to have come in, they know it's only going to cost, you know, a thousand or two thousand dollars, you know, bring it to the parks board. We can talk to Robert about it. We can look at it for the parks prioritization. And then we can kind of start to move those things forward as we're recognizing those. But I think in the current um, request here, eight hundred and ninety two dollars in my opinion is a no brainer. Um, I think the value added benefit is very good to have that really good green grass. We have the mowing going on. We're seeing the, the benefit of that already. Um, and all this is going to do is create uh, a great usable green space in the park triangle over there in the Hidden Creek uh, area. So that's just my opinion. Did you have a question, Ryan? Uh, just a clarification on the uh, definition of the park triangle. The, the, uh, I am familiar with the park, but and I think I know where you're talking about, but if you can clarify that. There's, there's a triangle piece that's between the asphalt walkway and where and the main road. You hit. I got, we've got a picture of it right here. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and it, there's, there's, a, there's a trees in there, and yep. we actually tried to plant The picture actually shows the grass looking kind of dry. <laughs> Pretty dry. <laughs> Seems like it's getting worse, and the weeds are getting more powerful. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is there another triangle, just the other side, on the... Uh, we don't call it the triangle. This is this is our reference to the triangle because it's the biggest piece that that is very visible closer to the homes and really needs a lot of maintenance. Any other questions? Comments? I do want you to understand that the triangle is the main thing, but it is the triangle plus because there's a long rectangular strip that would be included in this that, that runs for the we're covering a good share of the park with this, oh. what's proposed. So where, what, what, what rectangular part are you seeing? Is it going to run like the length of the whole park pretty much? Because it's, it's kind of a weird shaped park. It's really long. And it runs from the triangle to the south. 
Okay. South and west. So yeah. where it starts to widen out is what you're hoping to also water in yeah. that grassy area. Just right, and, it all, south. and it's the pieces that abut that because the the asphalt walkway kind of splits the grassy areas and it'll keep all that green yeah. and hopefully keep the weeds down as well. Right. Any other questions or comments? Do we have a motion? I move that we approve the uh, grant as is. I'll second it. It's been moved and seconded that we approve the grant as written. Any other discussion? I just say I'm really happy to have the grant program back. It's awesome. Yeah. We're doing yeah. good projects. <laughs> Super thrilled. All right. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed? Grants approved. Excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for do, doing this Do you need awesome. uh, more volunteers? We're going to put out a request for more, but I mean, hopefully we're going to have enough. Thank you. Park reports. Well, it's going to be me. I'll be first. You'll be first? Yeah. Um, well, I was just looking for more. I, I walked down to Willamette Manor today. There are some people using the park. Uh, it's a good park. It's a little bit far from me, so I don't use it that often, but I don't know. It's a great park. It's nice, and I noticed it's nice and green. It must be one of the irrigated parks. Yes. Uh, and it was nice and mowed. Uh, the tennis court I took another look at this time, it was less wet, so it was easier to see the cracks in it. There's a few s small ones here and there. Um, it looked like there was a repaired area on the north side of it that was starting to like peel, bubble up, and, and needs to be repaired again. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's a great park. The, maybe the m most needs improvement part of it is that the pathway, the asphalt pathway that kind of extends from the street into the majority of the north side of the park is a little old and and not very wide, but other than that, it's fine. Yeah. Yes, Robert. So the pathway <coughs> and multiple pathways this year, that's one of them, Great. will be overlaid. Awesome. So I love in it. this budget. Is it going to be wider? Yes, it will. Okay, cause It'll go from four people. feet wide to six feet wide. Probably ADA requirement, yep. yeah. Well, that's true. <coughs> that's been in there a long time. Yeah, that path's getting pretty old. So it's not as, it's not as torn up as you'd expect. But it's, it's narrow, narrow and, and a little lumpy, little bumpy. lumpy yep. mm -hmm. So on the on the overlay, are they are they grinding down to core and then redoing, or are they just going over the top? Over the top and widening at the same time. So they're actually going to be excavating next to what's currently there, <laughs> laying new rock, compacting that. And oh, then they are okay. So they're digging it all out, mm -hmm. more or less. Then. But not removing the entire path. Right. Yeah. Okay. If that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Just sometimes those. Have a tendency to risk alligatoring after a while if they don't. Um, we're not going paper thin either. We're going to give it a good solid overlay. It's awesome. Yeah, that's great. That's the summary you think? I'm hoping. Um, <laughs> Actually, that's it's either going to be this fall, not summer, because I mean we're in summer right now. It'll be this fall. Worst case scenario would be next spring. Cool. But yeah. Uh, Palmacia is. Yeah, same as it ever was, which does make me wonder. There was some talk a little while ago um, about some uh, neighborhood people who were interested in putting in, like, maybe some benches, and, right. and that kind of fizzled out. I don't, yeah, I don't really have any further really comment. Wrong. I just wondered, hey, that died seemingly along with our uh, interest in Is that on the project doing list? something else with Do you it. think of that park? I think it's just a natural area, isn't it? Sort of. Right. Undeveloped park, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. undeveloped. Well, you know, the neighbors used to use it for gardens. So oh, we they could still do. We could s just turn that into a community garden and get some That's use out of it. Been on the conversation. I guess we have to change the master plan to do that, though, right? And provide water to the park if we don't have. Well, there's a river there. What more do you want? <laughs> get rid of water rights. Bucket a pump? Time. Some buckets? <laughs> Off one of the neighbor's house? All right. My turn. Uh, ben Miller Park. Yeah, I was uh, up there the other day and 
Maybe if we fill that huge pothole along uh, BB there, off street parking might be a little easier. <coughs> and um, the wood fall restraint seems to be a little thin. So have you, have you replaced any of that lately? That is one of the parks that is on our list to use the wood chips from the big toy. Oh. We're going to be replacing them in that park I sometime this summer. I was wondering that because, yeah, it looks kind of like it's dirt about four inches down. Yep. It's on our list. And the play structure is pretty good shape except Not for bad. the assorted ground-in graffiti, mm -hmm. which you can't do much about. Yeah. yeah. It's carved into the structure. And you have that cherry tree. Are you going to be – I'm assuming it's all going to go away. It's been the cherry cut down. tree that fell over? Well, it's cut it, – cut off at the bottom now. I assume it was going to be all gone soon. Yeah, so I have a wood crew that's going to I thought come somebody did to pick handle. the cherries off it. <laughs> <laughs> no, unfortunately that cherry tree grew a few too many cherries this year and underwent a afternoon windstorm and it uh, opened up like a flower. That's too bad. Hmm. Yeah. Triple, 50 foot tall triple trunk cherry tree all went hmm. The attachment Luckily nobody must got have been poor, huh? The what? <laughs> it's all come into the to bottom. <coughs> it all uprooted in three different directions. Never seen anything like it in my life. Harvey but already blew over many years ago. The flare. It has so like many that. cherries on it, though. Like, I, you look at it on the ground, you're like, how could you even grow another cherry? <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder you fell over. Last <laughs> or raw. Darn, yeah. I was going to send the birds over there next year instead of my <laughs> cherry trees. <laughs> uh, and I talked to some locals who were just there to play Pokemon. <laughs> but they suggested, since they had grade school children, that we put in something for that age group instead of just the toddler play structure. Where are you going to put it? I don't know. Put it on the hill so they can swing and go out into the creek. I don't know. That's what they suggested. I think Mars is actually a pretty big park. I would just say at the time that we replace that play structure, whenever that is, we can have that discussion and involve the neighborhood just like we did up at the Meadows Park. Mm, okay, but it's in pretty good shape. Oh. Uh, for as much abuse as it takes it in pretty uh, good yeah, shape. Kids take some abuse. <laughs> it does. <laughs> oh, Bear Park. Well, you got the poison oak in there pretty much under control, although the ivy's starting to get out of control along the road. Uh, there's a tree that had fallen or broke down. It's been cut into bolts, and it's just laying there, and the grass is going around. I don't know how long it's been there. And uh, there's a tree root pushing up what looks like a fairly new walkway and it's got quite a tri uh, trip hazard on it so again that walkway will be repaved with this other uh, well, that, that there's going to be multiple walkways repaved that's one of them also yeah that would be a good idea I, that yeah. fir tree is uh, pushed it up pretty big um, and of course that light uh, that people have asked for to Not walk fair. through that is that anywhere on the uh, not yet sometime when it get to it, huh? And I just want to know how much longer before we pay off the water, the water department back. I don't have an answer for you on that right this second, but I could find out for you. If it means a lot, I will absolutely get that number for you. Well, it doesn't mean a lot. I was just curious. So when you get to it, you get yeah. to it. Sounds good. And do we have some wood chips stored on that park? Wood chips stored in that park? Yeah. Because there's a big no. pile on the park. I think it's the neighbor's pile. <laughs> <laughs> on the park, completely on the park. It's hard to tell where the property line on is, the but it appears to be on the park. east side of the park, is that where you're referring to? Yeah. Yeah, that's the neighbor's wood chips. <laughs> I, well, I thought we could just They may or may not be slightly on our park boundary, but I'm not too worried about it over there. All right. Mr. Taylor's not here. I'll go next. Uh, I'm Wayne Fry. I take care of, I monitor uh, Country Glen and Hidden Creek Park. I go there often. Uh, I ride my bike through there. I take care of the soccer field at Country Glen Park. That was my idea. And I, uh, the goalposts are up. The uh, field is not striped right at the moment. And uh, I've been a little hesitant to restripe the field just because uh, no one's really using the soccer field. I go over there many times, different times of the day, different times of the week, and no one's playing soccer. Mm. And I find it uh, disappointing. But uh, the World Cup, you'd think everybody would play. 
but the uh, goalposts are standing. I replaced the uh, guidelines on the goalposts. They had weathered uh, to the point where they were just falling apart. So I replaced them with some new uh, nylon cord. Um, Country Glen, uh, the playground, gets a lot of use, not from just the little kids, but from the teenagers also. <laughs> it's like, I'm thinking to myself, don't these teenagers, can't they play soccer? Wouldn't they have more fun <laughs> playing soccer? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean, they're playing on the, they're playing on the little kid playground, <laughs> which is in good shape. Um, I think the wood chips might be a little old. Maybe we can use some wood chips from the big toy, possibly. Uh, Hidden Creek Park. Um, I, I noted two months ago that it had some weeds in it, and I went over personally and dug up two bags of weeds. Um, there's more. <laughs> and uh, I'd like to challenge my park uh, board members to pull weeds in their parks also. Uh, Robert said I w said we could, I said, can we pull a weed if we want to, if we can volunteer and not use Roundup or whatever? And Robert said, you can pop a weed anytime you want. <laughs> but we can't spray it? I would recommend, recommend not spray. Also in Hidden Creek, I had a neighbor approach me. She talked to me about uh, horsetail. Uh, apparently it's an invasive plant, grows on the creek side, mm -hmm. and it's pervasive and we might want to uh, have some effort to remove that, no? What do you think? If you figure out how to remove horsetail, I will love you forever. It yeah, literally- she, had an idea. she suggested you put um, stems in vinegar and then it circulates systemically and it kills it. All the research I've done and everything we've tried, it doesn't kill it. You know, I don't know, but. <laughs> So the roots, the, the problem that I understand with that plant is the roots actually grow so deep that the poison never fully makes it down to the bottom of the plant, okay. no matter what you do. So it doesn't take just a little tiny bit of that root. But isn't the one you pop the, like at the, the dog park? A dog park? No. Um, I don't think we have horse tail at the dog park. It's generally along waterways, um, and it thrives in the heat of the summer. Um, you can spray it and it looks like it died and then it grows right back. Um, yeah, it's digging it out, scrape, pulling it uh, out. Dig Any eight feet is what I've been told. Eight feet? Yeah. <laughs> Done a lot of research on that plant. Okay. I think that plant pour, pour concrete over it or dig eight feet deep. Hmm. You need a new path out there? Oh, also on uh, Country Glen Park, the uh, pathway that goes around the park has some uh, bumps in it. The pathway is about four feet wide <coughs> and has some bumps in it. I don't know if that's scheduled for repaving or... So or which, which, just curious, which part of the path? Because the, the front portion uh, along the roadway is going to be repaved. On the other side. It's on the, the back On the portion. creek side. Along the creek, it yeah. has some bumps. Has some bumps in it. Okay. On I'll the. I'll have to look at that. It's possible they could be ground down. Are they lifting? Like there's roots underneath pushing up. I don't see roots. It's more like it's uh, depressing. Little valleys, bumps, rollies. <laughs> like trip hazard rollies, or like just slow kind of. <coughs> just curious. Depends on who you are. Whether it's a trip hazard. The ones I, I I'm familiar with are roots. Roots. They're, they're roots are rising the um, the asphalt. Okay. And I walk that like Wayne almost pretty much every day. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. But it's as far as the shape of that, it's way better than the front yeah. the parallel to the road. For sure. That's, that's going to be dangerous because it's creating um, uh, water, which will create moss, which will be slippery. And On the front. It, yeah. Yeah. So there's going to be some, you know, preventative action we could probably do in terms of uh, safety. Uh, but uh, overall. Wayne does an incredible job. And I might mention Don over there, you know, those guys have been amazing. I watch them. So they, I feel bad because I can't help them anymore, but um, they do a great job. Hand. No, they do. <laughs> so you could at least go supervise. Yeah, okay. That's Bring not cold I mean. drinks. <laughs> that's a good idea. Uh, that's yes, all I have for uh, Country Glen and Hidden Creek. 
Okay. So I do uh, monitor those parks. I, I ride my bike there like four times a week. I'll stop and if the goalposts are down, I'll stop, interrupt my ride and put the goalpost back up for the soccer field. Um, just wish more kids would play soccer and get off the little kids playground and do some big kid activities. <laughs> yes, Robert. So just a quick question. Did, did you notice a heavier amount of use uh, when it first went in or maybe there's a different time of year that the soccer players were more interested in using that field or has it kind of been slow the whole time? It's been slow the entire time. Okay. Uh, it's uh, I just very rare that I see someone playing there. Hmm. It's yeah, disappointing. <laughs> They're all out playing Pokemon on their cell phones, I guess. <laughs> Wayne? Yes. Um, part of our park board and the goal of the park is to have some summertime club or training. Have you talked to any of the soccer coaches or any of the schools and say, you know, can we have a neighborhood get together? I haven't. That's a good idea. Just a thought, you know, maybe just because kids don't realize that it's open for them to use. All right. Quinn has made a request that since he wasn't here last year that <coughs> he make right. his report now. Last month, year, whatever. Thank you, Lee. Um, again, I apologize for not being here the last, last week, last month. Um, I'm going through a heavy schedule of 12 to 14 hours a day. So, um, Kaiser Little League, um, that complex has really improved over the last two years. Uh, this year was probably the best it's been ever. Uh, we have a full-time maintenance guy up there and, uh, he volunteers. He stays there, does all the mowing. We don't have 10 different people to run the tractors, which is, caused us a lot of problems when you have that many people driving tractors mm -hmm. to tear them up real fast so uh, he's done a fabulous job and we're keeping up with the water we had a uh, more district tournaments this year up there we're slowly getting those district tournaments back and hopefully we get more next year uh, KYSA is going to have a tournament here this next weekend and then we start the heavy fall season with uh, uh, NAFA uh, which is an organization of uh, by Benji uh, that has 150 teams of softball girls big big organization <coughs> and they they go all fall long on Saturday and Sunday it's heavy schedule heavy schedule um, so anyway I've been very happy about it we're looking at doing some other projects up there and um, I wanted to talk just briefly because I might you might want me to go to Robert for this, but we need to put a roof on our buildings out there. And uh, they've been there 30, 40 years, the buildings. And um, we're having a lot of problems with it all the time. The shingles are coming off and we haven't had the money to do that. Um, I have some proposals and if next month I'll fill out a grant deal to see if the grant deal can help on that. Um, I want to put metal on because the wind is so bad out there that it needs metal and the proposal for the metal is 19,700 and if we use the regular shingles it's going to be um, 13,700 on that. So I'll have somebody else make the presentation next month um, but if you can help on that in the grant program that would be great. The other thing I wanted to talk about just briefly because there's a lot of elderly people that come to that park and we have great big rocks in it. Oh, just like yesterday when I was there, I helped haul a couple of people out on the gator because uh, they can't walk on that hard rock stuff, especially up in the parking lot. And they're good supporters. And they're good supporters. Well, even the, even <coughs> the coaches gripe about it because they're wheeling all their equipment in these carts and stuff. Um, talk to Chris Epley about the paving of this and he thinks that project really is a city function instead of the Little League um, because there's many different people that use that um, so I wanted to bring that up because they always say go to the Parks Board first 
Um, I haven't gone back to Chris. I got a, a bid. And by the way, the bids are terrible right now. Um, I have a guy that's kind of a professional that used to lay asphalt, and he's been working on this for me. And out of eight people we called, only, um, only one of them would return the call. They're that busy. Yep. And uh, that bid came back at 81500 <laughs> And we could have done that. 10, 15 years ago for about twenty five, thirty thousand dollars $30,000. So um, I want to bring that up. Y yes. Mr. Chair, if I might, on that bid, does that include the, the environmental and design portion with the flowage change that's going to have to happen for that? Say that one more time. So anytime you do a capital project that big, you have to go through environmental and design, and you have to look at your water flowage, because when you create an impermeable surface, you have to look at your drainage. Does that include that as well? Okay. Um, that has to be looked at. I've met with Bill Lawyer because the whole complex drains off that parking lot. It is so hard and packed on right. the dirt, it doesn't go through the surface at all. Right. And if you saw the pictures that I had a couple of months ago, the North Road is a river that's that big. And we put a drain in down on the fields because we couldn't get on the fields. It was so bad. And Bill suggested on that some things uh, to do, and I talked to Robert about it. And uh, I think once we come right off the asphalt is to put a sump drain there, uh, even though we, we turn around and we pick up a lot of that water now down below into a drain system, and it seemed to work pretty good. It probably won't work when it just literally pours because the drain system won't even pick up all that water that's coming off the parking lot. So. Yes, we considering that, things that need to be done. I, I don't see this happening, but I'd like to get the procedure going uh, to see if sometime when prices come down, because yeah. this is ridiculous to pay that kind of money for, for that. And the only time we'll be able to do that is when things get slow, and they will get slow again. And uh, if we're prepared for that, we can maybe do it in a slow time. Well, you really, yeah. Any questions for Clint? Anything else, Clint? Okay, nope, I'll just, work with uh, Robert just, on. Uh, on your paving, uh, yes. do you have, do you know which pathway? Is, is it the entire park or? No, we're talking about the parking lot is paved where the big round water tower is. The parking lot where the ball water tower is, that one there, right across the street from that is the paving that we're talking about that covers the front entrance. That was the main parking lot for years right there, and that's the one we're talking about. Okay, but not down? No, no, that, okay. that we can't even touch because of other problems. But we're working on what they call uh, shale rock. I don't know if you, it's just like, it, well, let's take the granite rock that we put in the dog park. We were able to get the environmental people to let us put that in instead of paving that, and it's worked real well. Uh, so there's other things we can do coming into the park going all the way down, but we're going to have to strip all that big rock out of there, and uh, I'm working on some guys that may help us donate some of that rock. But I'm looking at least doing part of it just so people can see if, if we can raise the money to do the rest of it. It, it needs to be done. I'm, I feel sorry for these people that walk in there and they can't walk to go down to the fields. And we got a gator, a gator down there that we use to, if they tell us, we'll pick them up at the parking lot and we'll take them all the way down and pick them up as I did uh, yesterday. Yes, Matt. Never. No, go ahead. No, it's, it's, well, it's all right. We'll, we'll chat later. Okay. Okay, staff report. Wake up, Robert. I'm awake. Let's talk uh, pickleball. So <clears throat> last month's meeting, we had some folks come in and discuss pickleball with us at Bob Newton specifically. I was hoping they'd be here tonight because I was kind of under the impression they were coming back, weren't you? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'll answer that because I, I do have a follow-up yeah. on that. Great. Go ahead. So... Um, I did talk to Mr. Russian and his partner. They are not quite ready, so they're looking into uh, some potential, potential investments and some other things. They're really trying to build 
the case and the argument and the location, the funding and everything, and then come back. Okay. Um, it was a little premature uh, to be ready for this month. I know uh, Mr. Rushton had to go down to Arizona for some for some stuff, but um, they are very interested. Uh, there is uh, enough potential right now to possibly just fund um, a full court on their own uh, with some, you know, maybe money from the Parks Matching Grant and then possibly even the Parks Foundation. But they're uh, they're still in the development process of that discussion. So. Okay. Um, I expect, realistically, we'll probably hear something maybe in August at the earliest, but it sure. could be as late as September. Okay. So just to go off that, um, from last month's meeting, it was um, asked of staff to hang some signs up at Bob Newton Park regarding the potential changing of the tennis court over to pickleball. And I immediately jumped on that. I had signs hung up the next week. And I have received... Uh, 12 or 13 emails saying yes we would absolutely love this to be changed to pickleball and I received one email saying we'd love it to stay tennis wow. so it's not a ton of response but not bad for hanging up some signs um, and it's like 95% yes please convert it to pickleball yeah. so um, the reason it's kind of an important discussion at this time moving forward is that court is currently on our list of ones to resurface this summer or next spring. And uh, I kind of need to know a direction we should go to it. Uh, do we want to stripe it as pickleball? Um, there was also some discussion of do we cross stripe or don't we cross stripe for multi-use? Uh, do we provide permanent nets or not? That's not in the budget right now, permanent nets for pickleball, um, because this wasn't a discussion back when the budget was being prepared. So, uh, but the response I'm getting is switch it to pickleball. So. Yes. So, um, I what the in the conversation that I've had, and, and, and I don't, this isn't fully fleshed out, but I think what they're, looking at from their perspective is probably the larger volume capacity, right? So possibly looking at something either at Claggett or Kaiser Rapids. Um, so I, I don't really know. I know there might have to be a master plan look there to find out where they may better fit. Um, I think that their goal really is kind of heading that tournament route, you know, kind of doing the bigger <coughs> thing and having specifically individualized pickleball courts is, is what I took away from the conversation. Um, I think it, as with Willamette Manor Park, I think if we can maximize the potential usage of, of a facility and then do the double striping, right? So you have the, you know, maybe the tennis is in white and let's say the pickleball is in, uh, I don't know, red or whatever, do that. You just said Willamette Manor. Just want to make sure you're talking Willamette they, or Bob Newton. Yes, thank you. Okay. I was Making sure we're clear because we have pickleball striped at Willamette. I like Willamette Manor in that striped I do too. Course it's great park. Uh, Bob Newton as it was. Thank yep. you. So I, I would say if, 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 if that's one of the ones on the docket right now and we need to kind of have a discussion about moving forward, <coughs> um, one of the key pieces that I found out of the survey was that the 55 and older crowd really wanted uh, more amenities for them to use in the parks. And, I th and my, my feeling on it personally would be that kind of use at a neighborhood park like that would be um, great to allow for both uh, tennis as well as pickleball. So how many tennis courts are at Bob Newton now? One. It's it's tennis mixed with basketball. So we have three basketball standards, basically like a mini full court and then a half court with tennis over that. So you, you kind of pick one or the other as you're playing. But same thing with pickleball. Like if somebody's playing pickleball, you're not going to show up and play tennis over them because you're sharing the court if you cross stripe it. Can, if we put in <coughs> permanent nets for pickleball, can, can that, does that... You'd remove be removing the tennis court. And the basketball? Uh, likely at least in one location, if not both. Okay. Um, what we could do, what my thought was, is maybe you install two permanent... If, if you're going this route, again, it's a big if... Um, you've got a couple options. If you're going that route, you could install maybe two permanents and then allow two to be set up temporarily. You bring your own net. But that way the basketball court could still be used on that side. Um, or you leave the tennis court as it is and you cross stripe pickleball and again bring your own net. And you have tennis, basketball, and pickleball. Yeah, 
I'm, I'm looking online. There are drawings where you can do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember in the conversation last month that um, thank you that there was some confusion when you marked for tennis and marked for <coughs> pickleball by the people who were playing. Um, even though the colors were different, it was distracting to make sure people were in bounds and out of bounds. And because of the response to the signage, I would suggest that we just go pickleball and drop tennis at this park <coughs> for this use. I, I mean, it sounds like there are people who will use this as pickleball more than people who will use it as tennis. So let's just make it a pickleball cart and see what the response is. It'd be a good way to find out how the response is and if people want more of them, and et cetera. Yeah. I, I'm mostly on the same page with you, Donna, but, sorry, yeah, don't <laughs> give me a high five yet. I, <laughs> but uh, I, I would agree at first, I was kind of like, yeah, let's just do pickleball. We've, already, we've got another tennis court that's, that's gonna be repaired and, and uh, brought up to speed soon anyway. And right now we're looking at, uh, is there any other? No. Just the two, right? Okay, so we've got two tennis courts and no pickleball. And it sounds like there's a lot of interest in pickleball. So I was thinking, well, yeah, let's just go with tennis. Uh, uh, one, leave the one tennis, make sure it's resurfaced, and then one pickleball. But, well, I know that it's actually several pickleballs. Is that what you're about to say? Well, it's cross stripe for pickleball. Willamette Manor is tennis with cross striping. Oh, of is pickleball. that what the blue stripes are? Yeah. Okay, I actually didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, but again, there was confusion about it, and it's, I guess, not and it's bring your own net because a lot of times what happens is you can't. Somebody mentioned it here. You can't have nets for pickleball permanent, and then a net for tennis mm -hmm. because right. the pickleball nets are now in the way of the tennis players. So it's yeah. You, so it really is. And then the, the bring your own net is accepted by some, but not all. You know the guy and Donna's uh, mentioned. The cross striping is a little bit of a distraction, and what I remember hearing was that that's they'll take that over nothing, um, but tournaments wouldn't be held there. Well, tournaments aren't going to be held at Bob Newton Park anyways because there's no parking. Yeah. You know, it's a neighborhood park. So, as far as tournaments go, the Kaiser Rapids discussion is probably the more appropriate location. Yeah. So, I mean, there's a lot of options on the table. Well, and I think to let me finish my or original point, I think it changes the discussion significantly if we're looking at at rem removing or drastically altering the ability to play basketball on that court also. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's where I'm kind of like, no, maybe not. Maybe we instead focus our efforts on, on Kaiser Rapids in the future. Uh, I don't know, really. That's kind of where I'm at. Well, we're going to repair that court when we are right now. I mean, this year, this summer. Well, and, and, I, and, I, and I think the, the, the piece, and, and, and Robert, correct me if I'm wrong. The reason you're bringing it up is this is kind of that discussion to find out what the future could be. So as we talked about changing the sports courts or replacing in kind or doing whatever, that was a, a possible outreach opportunity, if I remember right, when we first had the discussion. Is that kind of what you're thinking, or what do you? Um, a little bit of that, but more so, I mean, I was literally in the process of trying to get, I already received or met with a contractor to look at, resurfacing the court and then this got brought up and so I, I need a direction to go here like I don't know if I should just have it restriped and leave it as is do we cross stripe pickleball um, how much basketball use does it look like down there how much basketball usage right I, I couldn't give you an answer on that I, are, they, if are, are the nets looking fresh they look like oh they get used? used they get used okay so and, I can't say I, I see a ton of people playing tennis there anymore Right. I used to see more. It's definitely I from from my viewpoint, which might not be very accurate, because um, I'm not out in the parks as much as many other people are. Right. But um, I haven't seen as much tennis going on there. I so, so I think the tennis thing may be kind of a. I mean, it sounds like it's one of these things that's kind of going oh. away, right? Um, maybe at this particular park, maybe not overall in the whole system, but maybe in this particular park. But I think the basketball piece is really important to consider. Um, is there an option to do the pickleball courts instead of the pickleball and tennis courts, but then also still have maybe separate the basketball court, maybe adjacent to or something 
to maintain that activity there. Are you saying add a basketball court? If that's necessary to just do pickleball. I suppose anything like that could be done, but now you're now you're not working within this year's budget. There isn't enough space on there to do basketball and pickleball. You could cross not, practice. Not permanently. Not mounting permanent pickleball nets. Well, I, with baller, you know, mounted it yeah. within. It would be a a major. Uh, so, so I guess my only concern is that leaves only one place in the park system to play basketball, and that's Claggett Creek, correct? It would be Claggett Creek, and we are also putting a half court back in at Northview this year. You are? So okay. Yeah, and Claggett Creek's going to Claggett Creek's in really bad repair right now. Claggett Creek is horrible. Well, both of them are, right. Northview but and Claggett. But those are both going to get new, one f a full court at Claggett and a half court at Northview. And so basketball, they? we'd have two options. I, I'm kind of in favor. I kind of want to lean towards, personally, I don't know about the rest of you guys, but I, I kind of want to lean towards, let's just put in some permanent pickleball nets. Because uh, that's what I was wondering, too, about how many places, how many options we have for basketball. I just don't want to leave, I don't want to drastically remove an option for a, a sport that's already there. But if we have other places in the park system to play basketball and play tennis, I'm kind of more in favor of introducing a new, seemingly popular sport <laughs> um, at what seems like a <coughs> very little cost. So you said, it's my turn. <laughs> you said if you only put in two pickleballs, you could still save one basketball. I do believe so. Mm. I mean, I haven't physically gone and measured and lined it out, but. The way I'm viewing it in my head right now, I'm pretty darn sure you can put two pickleball on the east side of the tennis net, leaving the west side of the tennis net to basketball only, which has two standards. Based on what I'm seeing online, that's what it looks like you can yeah. do pretty yeah. easy. So, and then one other option, just to throw it out there, would be leave the tennis net up, leave the basketball hoops there, and cross-stripe pickleball as bring your own net for now. And then maybe next year we look at putting in permanent nets when we can fit it into the budget. That's going to require some rework, though, right? Uh, not as much as you think. So I just remember doing the survey. Yeah. So we got lots and lots and lots of people that responded to pickleball or asked for pickleball. Very few people asked for outside bas basketball. Mm -hmm. Nobody asked about tennis. Um, so I think that we need to move forward on this as quickly as we can to provide that space for the people that want to play pickleball. Were you saying that the nets are for pickleball, you don't want to permanently mount those? You can. You can. We don't have to. If, if we want to just go only pickleball, that's what you're saying? But you, uh, they can be, be done. It'd be best if you're going only pickleball to mount permanent nets. The problem with that whole conversation is we didn't budget this year to do that. Okay. The reason it's being discussed right now is because some folks showed up to the last month's meeting. So if we go only pickleball, mm -hmm. right, not do the cross striping and all the new nets for the tennis and everything else like that, there's not enough within the budget to just do straight pickleball with, to, with the permanent nets? Correct. We, we didn't budget for nets and installation of four nets. It's not just hanging a net. I mean, you're adding so it, posts, but if it was striped, permanent if it, if posts, it was done concrete in the ground properly. At, you but know. if it was done for pickleball, bring your net. Mm -hmm. Next year could come in and do the permanent You could nets. pothole posts in with maybe a little touch-up. I have one comment. Um, it just seems like uh, they could play basketball at pretty much any school if they wanted to play basketball. So we're. I That's true. Well, but during school hours and stuff, if you got older teenagers or adults that want to play basketball, they can't be on school property. Okay. So. If. Well, I mean. It <laughs> now it's your point. Well, if you're saying that we can't do the permanent ones this year because it's not in the budget anyway, then we stripe it for pickleball, and you can still do basketball. And if we don't get any response from the basketball, then who cares? When we put in our permanent ones, we're I done. I like it. Mm -hmm. Do we need to make a motion on nope. on the striping, or are you just going to go ahead and stripe it? I'll move forward with that. I like that. Awesome. Great. 
then we can have that discussion before next year's budget on do we try to incorporate some permanent nets or where does that fall into our overall plan well, of improvements? Ask for a grant from the Parks Foundation to buy nets or permanent installation. Yeah, there's a lot of other options out there. I think the one thing that I'd really like to encourage, especially as we look at replacing the sports courts and things in the next fiscal, is I think we need to kind of back that plan up now and figure out what we're looking at because I think it's really important to do this outreach um, because the, those of us sitting up here at the dais have our opinions, but I think we did a really good job in kind of setting the, the priorities. But I think if, if you have some ideas on other courts and stuff you're looking at, maybe we can just get the information out there, encourage that feedback. If we get none, we get none. But you know, if somebody comes in, you know, if, 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 if the pickleball folks would have been here during the prioritization <laughs> process and said, hey, we got this grand plan, I think you could have been better prepared mm -hmm. to plan that out. I mean, so it can be everything. Yeah, <laughs> and so I, I think if, if we can start to, you know, early fall, maybe start to prior look at the prioritization for the next fiscal year and the projects, and then use the winter as that opportunity to kind of prep the, the conversation on, on how those projects are gonna shape out. I think that's really important that we uh, constantly throughout this, uh, you know, uh, uh, catching up and everything that we're constantly engaging the people who are paying this uh, to ensure that, you know, they're really getting the value for their dollar. And I think that's really, really important. And uh, I'd like to really emphasize that for looking at next year. So otherwise, I mean, it's fantastic. I think it's great. Okay, so uh, Meadows Play Structure update for you guys. Um, they made amazing progress last month. And uh, it's on the books right now for a final walkthrough with the contractor this Thursday. So they're going to be up there tomorrow doing some final grading of the dirt around the new curbing um, that they poured for the rubberized surface. Um, and then once everything is complete, we will open it up to the public. Um, we may have to actually close part of the park down uh, in the near future for uh, the pathway project, um, our overall paving pathway project, park uh, citywide, we'll probably won't happen until this fall. We are wanting to get the main access um, to the playground done sooner than that. So we may go ahead and move forward with having that poured in concrete just so the neighborhood has a nice yeah. new, fresh, safe access to the new playground. Um, so we may need to close part of it down to, to pour some concrete in the next month or so. Um, but other than that, it's awesome. amazing. I can't wait to see how many people start using this park again. It's going to be fantastic. It. I drive yeah. by it every day, and I just, yeah. it, I just I mean, absolutely it, love it. It looks so just, cool. Just driving by, you see it. It's like, <laughs> yeah. oh. I've been getting a lot of phone calls. When can we get in? When can we get in? <laughs> so. have some shade on it. Yeah, it's the one park that has shade, right? Well, there was so. one tree that was <coughs> removed or chopped up recently. Yeah, we had a, actually a couple trees removed. Um, they were kind of sickly looking and causing our path some major issues. And before I go putting a new path in, I wanted to uh, take care of a, a fir tree that, um, sorry, but I'm not crazy about fir trees, especially not in that park. So um, we've planted a lot of new trees in that park over the last two years. And we may even add one or two more uh, this next fall, we'll see. But I've uh, specifically been adding trees to that park, knowing that some would be coming out in the near future. So it's prepared for that. And then staff will be doing um, some irrigation work. We've already done some. We're going to do some more to bring some sprinkler heads back up to the new footprint of the north side of the playground because we did expand from four swings to six swings. We did increase the footprint just a little bit, not extreme, um, to allow for one of the ADA swings for sure. So. So when is the rubber pole protection going in there? It's in. It's like it's already done. We're we're doing our final walkthrough on Thursday. Is is the plan? Unless something changes, it could be pushed back. So, so Robert, in looking at Meadows, um, it's got the you know the funky water flowage, right? Are you and you get these sinkholes and yeah. things like that. So how much of that has been addressed, and what are, what does your success look like on that uh, as you've gone through it this summer? <coughs> um, I'll I'll say this. Based on um, the rubberized surfacing, so you need uh, in the new playground, it needs to be somewhat flat. So a lot of the soil that was excavated out from the old play structure footprint was reused close nearby to regrade the soil to meet the uh, new curb. 
So we didn't have quite as much leftover soil as we thought we were going to have, but we did have some and we did use that to fill in some of these extreme lows that were in the park. We didn't go chasing minor lows, we just got the extreme ones. Um, I don't have a clue how much um, chasing of sinkholes we're gonna <laughs> see in our near future. Um, there's no way to really tell, but we did try to, you know, go after some of the significant ones with the soil. And, you know, at some point, if we need to truck in a couple dump trucks of soil to chase some lows again, we'll do it, you know? It's. Well, I know that was a big goal here, so yeah. congrats on getting that. Um, I don't know if any of you noticed when you parked your car in the parking lot this evening, but we now have a new roof on the gazebo. I noticed that. So if you didn't notice it, please go look right after the meeting. I didn't That's drive by been in the works for eight years. So. It's done. It looks great. I'm happy with it. Awesome. <laughs> we only had to change out two boards that had dry rot. I couldn't believe it. We've lost really? shingle after shingle after shingle, mm -hmm. but we only had to replace two boards for dry rot. So oh. that was pretty yes. awesome. Um, Timing is everything. One more year. One more year, it would have been <laughs> toast, right? Yeah. That's all. Wow. Roland. Uh, yes, our um, council meeting was. Uh, it was my first meeting back from my um, uh, health, and um, pretty un it was actually uneventful, but uh, one of the things that we did talk about is uh, following up on the shooting thing, and that's the serious stuff with uh, Daryl over there brought up. A um, couple of things that uh, are coming up. Well, well today we, uh, I want to mention they attended the cha chamber luncheon where they installed our new officers. So we went from Nathan Bauer, our past president with the chamber, and now it will be um, uh, Bob Shackelford which we all know. And um, to mention that, I, Kathy, our mayor, was there uh, talking about the Mid Willamette uh, Homeless Initiative and something that uh, we've been working on uh, uh, in coordination with other cities and municipalities, but we all pitched in and for this um, uh, initiative to help with the homeless. Now, uh, one of the speakers who is now the coordinator by the name of Ali, Tra uh, I don't know how to pronounce it, it's Traco, I believe it's Traco. And uh, we have a good team that's gonna put that together and I'm pretty excited about how the the work that's been done, strategic planning. Uh, it's been a long process, and uh, we're kind of proud of Kathy, who's been involved in that for, uh, as far as Kaiser, uh, representing the city of Kaiser. Um, up and coming events, we have a uh, night out coming up on August 7th, I believe, 2018. And Kaiser's very active in that. I think we've had, every year it gets bigger and bigger. I've had the fun of driving with uh, Chief Teague and going to these events. So uh, if you're not participating, uh, check it out. Or if you are, you know, the, there's probably about 100 events in the neighborhood in the area. It actually, it's about 78 or something like that. But uh, that's pretty much it. Um, uh, I will say one thing as far as parks go. And, uh, you know, I kind of, I live in front of a park, so I see everything. I see Wayne, everybody working and stuff. But uh, I have noticed a big difference in the maintenance upkeep. Uh, and not only in the parks that I'm around, but as I take my dog around and, and see other parks. Uh, so I think that's been working uh, very extremely well. Uh, so my compliments to you, Robert, and the, and the guys doing a great job. And um, it's something that we've always wanted to see and it's coming to fruition. And I'm very thankful that our council uh, put that forth because it's something uh, not only police, but the parks to me is a big vital part of our city. That's all I got, folks. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Rowan. Are you going to a night out? I'm sorry? Is August, I believe it's August 7th, 2018. Seven? Yeah, mm -hmm. and by the way, those are really fun. I mean, even if you just drive around, everybody's really welcoming and stuff, and it's uh, it's kind of cool. You get to see all the folks you know, so uh, it's a great event, and um, we'll, we'll participate in that this year. Thank you. Any other business? A couple quick things, Mr. Chair. Yes, Matt. <laughs> get the eye roll, I love it. <laughs> no, uh, no, I was looking down, checking this <laughs> out. Just kidding. <laughs> um, <laughs> So the pickleball thing we talked about, um, just want to talk about real quick. Uh, something was brought up, I think about a year ago or something, uh, by, by our friend Daryl, and I kind of want to revisit it. And, and I think that was one of the things uh, that, you know, there are so many people like Wayne and Roland and Mark Callier and Daryl and so many others that really take a lot of pride in, in, in our parks and then and don't necessarily get a lot of I, don't, I don't know if the recognition is the right thing, but one of the things Daryl brought up was, you know, maybe having an opportunity for folks in our community to become sort of a park steward or some or sort of a, 
um, part caretaker, so to speak, you know, unofficially, but, you know, those people that really spend a lot of time. And so I'd like to uh, suggest that as a possible agenda item in our August to kind of talk about, maybe get some ideas uh, generated by then and have a, have a discussion about that. But I think it's really important, especially, you know, as, as the city has decided to take a lot of pride back into their parks and, and want to, you know, put forth, um, I think it's going to sort of re-energize uh, people to want to be out there and, 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 and keep an eye out and make sure that we're taking care of our stuff. So, um, you know, Mr. Chair, if we can recommend that maybe for August, that'd be great. Um, the other thing is, uh, over the last June or May, I don't even know, it's been weeks and weeks and weeks, uh, as part of the orchard cleanup at Kaiser Rapids Park, uh, the Clyde Creek Watershed Council and Rotary has been out there uh, picking up sticks. Uh, we've had quite a few different groups and stuff out there, um, you know, putting in three or four hours each Saturday, week after week after week. Um, it's, uh, I'd say, realistically, probably 50% totally complete. Um, and right now, the Boys and Girls Club uh, is participating over the next few weeks. They're bringing out volunteers throughout the week. For those of us that have day jobs, it's hard to get out. So if there are folks that have the ability to go out and help Mark Callier with that project, it would be great, whether it's driving a tractor or whatever with the trailer, that would be really, really helpful. Um, that project is, uh, it, it, it's not fun. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's literally, you're, you're backbreaking. Um, but it's important and uh, we're trying to get that, um, get that all done. Um, and last thing, uh, just to, if anybody's interested, uh, you know, the uh, concert series opened up last week with um, Abbey Road was absolutely phenomenal. Uh, the opening was just incredible. The whole uh, amphitheater was packed, which for an early um, falsely advertised show uh, was really good. Uh, it had the wrong <laughs> dates on it, but um, you know, that it is what it is. Uh, but just amazing, the turnout, they did a great job. Uh, Clint got a new uh, a distributor out there, Sanyam Brewing, so they're doing the, the, the beers and spirits and whatever. Um, but also at the end of this month, uh, Kaiser Homegrown Theater is doing, I think, their seventh, sixth or seventh annual uh, free Shakespeare in the Park doing the Tempest, so it's going to be pretty fun down there. Uh, this week there's two concerts. Uh, there's one Friday and then one Saturday, Brady Goss coming in. And uh, also our volcanoes are kicking butt so far this year. Uh, Joey Bart hit a grand slam last night, which was pretty amazing. And uh, get out to the Volcano Stadium and check it out. It's a lot of fun. Thank you. Anything else? Stand adjourned at 718. Uh -huh.